It's time to babble the fuck on. Live from the John Lovitz Podcast Theater, it's Hollywood Babylon. With your hosts, Kevin Smith and Ralph Garman. So let's babble the fuck on. I'm Kevin Smith. And I'm Ralph Garman. You sold us out again, you beautiful sons of bitches. Yeah. In the rain. Yeah, that was a shitty day. Which is like a meteor shower in Los Angeles. People usually just stay the fuck in their bunkers. It is. It is kind of like end of the world, man. Once I saw the rain come in, went outside my house, painted dead inside. Did you? <laughs> just in case. <laughs> Quick disclaimer. Uh, <laughs> just before we stepped out on the stage, Kevin turned to me and said, wow, I'm fucked up all Don't of a sudden. Don't tell him that, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's not... That's not strictly true. It was just before we came down, there was a little adrenaline rush, and we had a conversation. I forgot to breathe, and uh-huh. <laughs> and the weed kicked in at the same time. I was like, yeah. wow! Anyway, no, no, no. Okay, let's talk about the rain. I, give me a chance to watch some uh, movies. little feature for the next few weeks here on Hollywood Babylon. Quick Kev watches Oscar screeners. Thing. Oh, I see. So you get the Free shit movies. sent to your house. Oh, shit, son. It's That's just, nice. I'm like a little girl in fucking American Beauty with all <laughs> the rose petals. All those fucking free DVDs hitting me and shit. Uh, what did I watch? I watched Flight. Did, have you seen Flight? Uh, Denzel Washington. Holy shit, man. Flight is, I'm not going to tell you the whole movie, but there's a. Thank f- God. Yeah, yeah. We only got about 90 minutes here tonight. <laughs> But it has, the opening half hour of that movie is fucking mind-bending. It's really, it's insanely uh, well-done filmmaking. But uh, without spoiling it, because I'm sure everyone has seen the fucking commercial. You know, the premise, Denzel plays a pilot who has to make an impossible sort of landing a la Scully when he landed in the Hudson River, right? Ex- that yes. <laughs> oh, just like, what Sully. episode of the X-Files yeah. was that? <laughs> I didn't see the movie. I just saw the trailer. Right? Scully, we got to land in the Hudson. I want to believe. I want to believe. <laughs> Scully, come on, land. <laughs> Was that your molder? Yeah, it's, that's not my, bad. My not bad. Scully, you have to land this thing. That's pretty fucking good, man. It's what I do, you know. Voices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. Yeah. Anyway, back to my review. Oh, okay. um, and barely a review, man. I just want to talk about the sequence of the plan. If you've seen the commercial... I'm not spoiling anything. If you haven't seen the commercial, just cover yours for about uh, fucking five seconds. And go. Fucking plane flies upside down. Yeah, I saw that. Okay, unspoilers. Now, when that happens... What if they're not listening and they didn't hear unspoilers? Oh, shit. I told them five seconds. Oh, okay. They should figure it out. Hopefully they were counting Mississippis. Um, There's the the plane... As I'm watching this, I'm like, bullshit. Immediately I go to the internet to see if it's true. And, of course, the internet will never lie to me. No. Um... (laughs) But it says that that is possible, that you could roll the plane and fucking fly it upside down. A jumbo jet. Yes. Now, if this is fucking true, why the fuck did I get thrown off that plane, man? <laughs> Maybe on can... one side, it just would the wings would have dipped a little bit, you know? I'm watching... If there had been a guy your size on the other side of the plane, I'm sure everything would have been fine. To balance it out? Exactly. I, was, I was watching this movie, and I was just, I rolled a tear, because I'm like, if this is possible, how, how was I left at the gate? You know how it's possible? How? <laughs> Booze. Denzel's a boozer in the show, right? Oh, I thought you were saying I was drunk. I was like, no, I was stoned. No, I'm saying Denzel can make yeah. that turn because it's all juiced up. That's and but that's the thing. I mean, again, I'm not. Gonna, Once I'm, again, it proves that with alcohol, all things are possible. Yes. And Ugly people can get laid. <laughs> Boring people can be amusing. And pilots can fly upside down. And he did coke as well. Oh, now that's my boy. Yes. He rocked a little bindle before he took to the friendly sky. Denzel's my boy. It's crazy, dude. It's crazy. But that's that. Uh, I mean, I don't want to spoil it much. But that would have been, I think, 
a really fascinating film if they had been like, look, he was able to do this shit he because he was fucked up and he was just like, let's try it. <laughs> you know? And it would have been this weird argument for like, hey, sometimes you should fly stone, I guess. He's doing a line off the roof <laughs> while they're upside down. John Goodman's in the movie and I'm pretty sure he plays Silent Bob's dad. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I'm um, fucking dealing drugs. It's pretty crazy. Anyway, it's so worth seeing. Go check it All out. All right, there you go. There's okay. the, uh, Kev's review for yeah. about... Not okay. a review, just a, you know, thing. Upcoming Oscar film. John Goodman, by the way, is in every fucking movie this year. Yeah. He's in Wreck-It Ralph. Uh, is he really? That he's, is well. he's The Hobbit, I think, coming up. He's, <laughs> I think he's in all of them. He is, man. He's he, was, he was the girl in The Hunger Games. I mean, this, <laughs> this guy fucking works all the time. Well, that's just because he was really good with a bow and arrow. Otherwise, he yeah. wouldn't have gotten that part that's as well. That's true. It's all about... They're shooting that sequel as well. I saw a picture of that, yeah. that Katniss girl jumping in a lake or some such. Jennifer thing. Lawrence. Yes. Yeah. You know, they uh, told her she was too fat for that role initially. The fuck out of here. Yeah. Was, and she's not a fat girl. She's, was she's Southwest <laughs> casting this film? Or? <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> said she didn't look hungry enough, I guess. That's what the problem was. But she said, no, I'm not going to lose weight because I know there'll be girls watching this film and I don't want to give the impression that you have to be stick. Thin to be an actress in Hollywood. Oh, right so on, so I said, I'm a healthy weight. I look fine. I'm not about to lose 20 pounds, you know? Fucking nice. So good for Standing her. up for the fatties. Well, she ain't well, really fat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stand up for the normals. Yeah, for, well, yeah. But, the, when the, but what about us fatties? We're still waiting for our break, man. Like, she stood up for the normies, but we're like, great. The normies win again. Hello, precious. Come on. <laughs> that was a big hit. <laughs> what, do we get one a decade? <laughs> Jennifer Hudson in Dreamgirls. Yeah, that was like a decade back, it felt like. Yeah. Of course, she did lose all the weight afterwards. Yeah, but. totally. And also, what about the fat white guy? You know? They, uh, yeah. Yeah. Ever since... Yeah, Goodman, that's true. Who's working more Speaking than Speaking of which, have you seen Flight? Oh, fuck. Here we go. <laughs> While we're talking about movies, quick uh, mention, our uh, evening's podcast tonight is sponsored by the Dave School, Digital Animation and Visual Effects School in Orlando, Florida. They actually will train you there at the school, which is on the back lot at Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida. They will train you in the ways of computer animation and visual effects. So if you want to get into movies, that's a real good way to do it, by the way, because every, almost every movie, even if it's not science fiction or, or special effects laden, they use computer effects in almost every film. That and one. there are a lot of young filmmakers who are like, uh, hey, I know how to do this shit, but they're like, I may not necessarily know how to write a script, but I could piece together like a short film that's just chock a block full of good looking stuff. And so you Dave can School. kind of get your way into the director's chair as well if you have a movable skill like this. They've got a, an amazing one year training program that they are offering right now. So you can go to daveschool.com. That's the digital animation and visual effects school. daveschool.com for more details and you should sign up and then move to Florida and you would be the smartest person in Florida. Because <laughs> Florida's fucked up. <laughs> That is a fucked up state. Every time you read anything in the news, that is some fucked up story about somebody eating somebody's face or, <laughs> or a, a girl shooting a guy because he came before she did. If you look, if you is look at a, a little thing? Bar, that happened this last week. They're doing that now? Yeah. <laughs> you better bone up, son. <laughs> We're fucked. I know. G girl shot her boyfriend because uh, he came before she did and she was fed up with it. Oh, so this wasn't the first time, apparently. I'm, I'm guessing there was a history. <laughs> it's a, if it's a first date, she's a little, she's a little sensitive, I yeah, think. Yeah, really, man. He's pulling out weaponry if he uh, shoots his load. Hair she trigger. shoots hers. Where's that rim shot when I need it? <laughs> you want a rim job? Stop it. <laughs> Before we get going tonight, we would like to uh, give some shout-outs to people who've come particularly long distances mm -hmm. for celebrating special occasions in a little segment we call, appropriately, Shout-Outs. It's a shout-out with Kevin and Brown, so get your cock out. Yeah, yeah. Get your cock out. One of these days, you're going to go right off the, uh, <laughs> right at, backwards, just ass overhead. How'd he die? That? Trying to fillet a microphone. Yeah. <laughs> Tumble he backwards. died as he lived, trying <laughs> to fillet right. a microphone. He wouldn't have gone any other way, really. 
Uh, as always, we get a ton of these. I'm sorry we can't get to them all. We, we just uh, pick out a couple and, and read them. So if we miss yours, fuck you. <laughs> But uh, you can always uh, reach us at hbopodcast at aol.com. Here is Matt's email uh, from Australia. Matt from Melbourne, Australia. You here, Matt? <laughs> Diplomatic immunity. <laughs> you really? You really? Works for any country. <laughs> Matt writes, uh, I'm writing to say I'm yet another goddamn Aussie who came all the way to see you guys tonight in Los Angeles after 15 hours stuck on a plane in the economy class. Mm. Oh, Matt. <laughs> I, I bleed for you, sir. Uh, I'm celebrating my 40th birthday, which isn't technically until April. <laughs> <laughs> it's because they're on a different schedule oh, that's than right. us in Australia. Because in Australia, it's April already, yes, right? Yes, <laughs> Okay. I got a preemptive pass from the wife to launch a, uh, excuse me, I got a leave pass from the wife to launch a preemptive birthday strike in L.A. and Vegas. So Vegas is the next stop, sir? Yeah. All right. Don't spend all your money here. <laughs> I would love it if Adam West as Batman and Bane could wish me a happy birthday and give me some advice for Las Vegas. Thanks for the uh, hundreds of hours of laughs, Matt. You can leave. So, Matthew, you're going to that evil city of sin and vice, Las Vegas. I personally, of course, never gamble. It dulls the senses and makes crime fighting that much more difficult. But could you put $20 on black for me? <laughs> I, like I, would, I, I would just like to say that while in Vegas, what happens there stays there. So perhaps you're wondering why you could shoot a man in the mouth with your cock. All right, that's, that's unnecessary. Uh, Sean Buss and his wife Amanda, are you guys in the house? There you go, hi guys. My wife Amanda and I are attending HBO for the second time tonight. We were almost unable to make it because Amanda has been feeling under the weather for the last week. Second time tonight? Did you do an earlier show? <laughs> no, it's their second time tonight. It's their second show. Oh, this shit. evening, it's their second show. <laughs> There's this moment where I was like, are you cheating on me at <laughs> 6 o'clock? I get it now. If there was a comma in there, it would have been helpful. Whatever. <laughs> Oh, so it was my reading that threw you. No, no, it yeah, wasn't the bale of weed that you smoked before we got here. That's what confused you, was my to, grammar. Go back, go back to the letter. I don't know why you stopped. Could you please have the McDonald's Fry Girl give Amanda some advice on how to stay healthy over the holidays and not get sick for our vacation next month? Sean Buss. Why, why certainly, I'm sure she has some excellent advice. What a retarded thing to ask for. No pun intended. Hi! You should be healthy with the holidays by eating vegetables and fruits. Like apples, the apple pie. Be careful, contents may be hot. And french fries are very nutritious. They... They feed them to babies. <laughs> At least they fed me when I was a baby, French fries. I don't care. Would you like sauce with the chicken McNugget? We have holiday sauces. We have poinsettia. <laughs> snow. Coal for bad children. And Santa. You don't want to know how Santa makes the sauce. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming out, guys. <laughs> Steve, Lindsay, Crystal, and Scott. We'll be at the show celebrating a belated 30th birthday celebration for my dear friend Crystal. She's always been a great friend. She even offered me a place to live when I moved to California, right, Steve? Oh. Yeah, Steve. Yeah, come on, knock on the door. Yeah. <laughs> See you down at the Regal Beagle. <laughs> 
She's had an, a tough first half of the year, emotionally and physically, while recovering from two broken ankles. <laughs> Fuck me. Yeah, yeah. Apparently she did. <laughs> what, two uh, broken ankles. What? How, how'd you break both Crystal. of them? Crystal. Bullshit, you got hobbled. <laughs> you, you took some money from a loan shark and you couldn't make the vig. <laughs> you dirty bird. Fell down some stairs at Disneyland. Why Did you make you, that fucking sweet money or yeah, what, why don't you man? you fucking own that park now? <laughs> you could own Star Wars now if you played your cards, right? <laughs> Did you get a settlement, anything? Any money from them? Kind word. <laughs> Did Mickey help you up? <laughs> Does it say in the back of the ticket? If you fall here, you're fucked. <laughs> you have to read the fine print, I guess. Anyway, she's on her own feet now. She's, had her own, she's got her own house. She's got a great boyfriend. She seems happier than she's been in quite a while. Well, that's nice. Can you wish her a happy birthday as Harrison Ford? Well, certainly. Learn how to fucking walk downstairs. A little birthday advice from Harrison Ford. <laughs> Who Happy breaks birthday. their ankles walking downstairs? I don't know. Brie and Jesus? <laughs> I'm assuming it's Jesus. I'm, what, Ben Stiller's a dick? Is that what you said? Oh, I thought you said, You're show right? us your dick! Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what kind of fucking show you think this is? Ralph, quick, show her your dick. <laughs> Ben Stiller's a dick. I, I mentioned uh, that a couple episodes yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's yeah. a revisitation. Uh, could you give Jesus some life advice now that he's 21 as the gay ghost? Yeah. <laughs> writes Bree. Also, if Kevin could give me a shout out, says Bree, or make or say anything to me in his creepy, sexy voice, it would make my night. Um, hey, Bree, my wife's here tonight. <laughs> What? Where? <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Here's what you do on your birthday, Jesus. You go to a massage place, right? You find yourself a nice guy. Next thing you know, you got a pup tent. You say, could you fix my pup tent? He says, what? Where? Never mind. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Gina. Is Gina here? Gina and Chris celebrating Chris's birthday? Wow. You're Chris right down there in front? How fucking drunk are you right now? Yeah, yeah. I can see that from here. Gina writes, coming to the show to celebrate my cousin Chris's birthday. He's a dude in his 40s who likes video games, playing with Legos and Star Wars. <laughs> Sounds like everybody in this room. In case you couldn't figure it out, he's also single, writes Gina. <laughs> That's a hell of a cousin you got there, Chris. Considering his love for all things geeky, I'm thinking Yoda should give him some sage birthday advice. Yoda, would you like to uh, impart some birthday advice to That's you? Chris? You don't do Yoda. You do Yoda. Let's split it up tonight. You you, you did a good bane. Throw him some Yoda. Um. Oh. Uh, on birthday fortieth, hand job you get <laughs> from a dude. You get the birthday pass. It's not gay in LA. Chewbacca will give you a handy. Uh, Chris and Selsa, are you guys here? Hi guys. My girlfriend Selsa and I are going to attend your show to celebrate her birthday. Although I have listened to your show for a long time, my Selsa has never had the pleasure. Well, it's a hell of a birthday for her, isn't yeah, it then, yeah, yeah. Chris? For her birthday, you're taking her to a show that you like that she's never heard before. You romantic bastard, you. <laughs> Selsa has never had the pleasure, in general, or just <laughs> having heard our show? 
And I thought we could change that tonight. I'm not sure she's prepared for how much she's about to hear about anal sex and Liam Neeson's <laughs> cock, but hopefully she'll be willing to forgive me if David Bowie would sing happy birthday to her and <laughs> Kevin would give us his sexiest dance. His sexiest dance. Not just your usual bullshit sexy dance. This has got to be your sexiest dance ever. I don't even know what you're talking about. Take off the jersey, <laughs> that's right. Put him on the glass, Kevin. Put him oh, on the glass. No. <laughs> Thanks for all the hours of funny, Chris. Well, I think uh, we can arrange for Mr. Bowie to wish happy birthday to Selsa, who's never heard this bit before and has no idea what we're doing. Where are you, man? Where are Where's you? Where's Selsa? Right back there she is. Selsa, how are you? Just the Kevin and Bean? Oh, you have no taste in radio. <laughs> Can we hit her with a little Bowie? Happy birthday to you, Selsa. Happy birthday to you, Selsa. You need a better boyfriend who will take you where you like it. Happy birthday to you, Selsa. Happy birthday to you, Selsa. Happy birthday to you, Selsa. I hope you enjoy your evening. Happy birthday to you, Selsa. Happy birthday to you, Selsa. You never heard this show, but I hope that you enjoy it. Happy birthday to you, Selsa. Happy birthday to you, Selsa. That is the worst birthday present ever. <laughs> Watching a dude in a hockey jersey catch his own jism in his mouth. That is the most exercise I get all week. Yeah. You start to incorporate touching me in the dance. I'm not sure I care for that at I like all. it for support, man. Yeah, I don't, I don't know it's if I care for that. so lost in eroticism. I just got to yeah. brace myself. Yeah. Like a mean fart. <laughs> <laughs> We also get emails from all around the world each and every week. Ain't no drag. Govin's got an email back. <laughs> Featuring Kevin's reactions. Uh, well, speaking of emails, we got a lot of emails this week from people who are looking to order um, Babylon T-shirts and Grammy T-shirts and stuff for Christmas presents. Yes. Yeah, uh, let the listeners know. If you order this week, I, I guarantee you we'll get them in the, in the post and you will get it by Christmas. So just right let on. people know. You can go to GarmyStrong.com for that. Hell of a yeah. gift to get. It's a beautiful shirt. It is. If, unless you're like Celsa and have never heard the show before, then you're like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Why is John Henson and a hockey player on this T-shirt? Why am I? <laughs> I don't even watch Wipeout. <laughs> Danielle writes, it's my very dear friend Hannah's birthday on Saturday, so I was hoping you and Kevin could wish her happy birthday for me. I would give her a present myself, but she's in Amsterdam, and I'm in Vancouver. Oh. Have you ever been to Amsterdam? I have not. You have never been to Amsterdam? <laughs> We've got fucking legal weed right here in California. <laughs> Why leave? But there, they've got, like, like cafes where you can go and enjoy it socially with other people. It's married. like going to a pot bar. I know, but I've been married for like almost 15 years. I find something that works, I stick with it. Yeah, I guess so. All right. I don't need to go traipsing around the world. I thought this would be fitting because we're both avid, avid HBO listeners. Uh, Hannah turned me on to the show in the first place. Not to, mention, not to mention the fact that I'm a huge stoner and Hannah's favorite passion is sipping on bourbon, just like you and Kev. I didn't bother to ask her what her favorite impression was because I didn't want to ruin the surprise. So I'll ask you to give her a birthday shout-out in my favorite voice, David Lynch, Danielle writes, <laughs> from Amsterdam. She says, please let me know if there's anything I can do to increase the chances of this being read on this weekend's show. Well, the nude photo you included, Danielle, really did help. I want to let you know that. Hello! Happy birthday to Hannah in Vancouver! I understand there's a lot of men up there who chop down trees. Congratulations on that, <laughs> Vancouver. That's in Canada, isn't it? Okay then, happy birthday, and don't forget, I can't remember. There you go. <laughs> this next email comes from Wayne Clark in Gosport, UK. He says, long time listener of the show. Hope you guys will eventually come to the UK. We're gonna try to get there next year. Uh, we'll yes, I've there. been there, it's very nice. Yes. 
<laughs> I've been there too. We just haven't ever brought the show there. Right. So, oh, that yeah. too. As well, yes. I thought you guys would like to see this Hulk toy I won from one of those crane machines you find at the fair. Ooh. It says it's official merchandise on the label, but I'm not so sure. Could you please take a look at the enclosed photographs and give me your thoughts, Wayne Clark? Let's take a look at the first picture. This is something he won in one of those, <laughs> one of those grabby machine deals. I guess it looks it looks legitimate enough, although this region looks a little bulbous to me. <laughs> is, can we see the second pic that Wayne sent along? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's official Hulk merchandise or not. It should be, man. It's what we all look for. <laughs> but it's never there. <laughs> well, these guys finally cracked the code. It's a plush Hulk doll with an enormous green cock. You know they were sitting around a marketing meeting and going, what do kids want in a Hulk? <laughs> Huge dick, sir. The massive dick. <laughs> Give that man a raise. Well, I think it must be official then. It must be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this next email... email is a uh, creepy clown request, so I'm guessing, I'm guessing it's creepy clown time. Creepy clown time? Creepy clown time. All right, this creepy clown request comes from Adam in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Holy shit, man. Cajun country. Oh, Lizzie Lohan. I guarantee. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Adam writes, uh, you make Monday mornings more bearable with Hollywood Babylon. I would like to request that Lucius the Stuttering Pimp would make a good creepy clown. <laughs> For those of you who didn't listen to, uh, I guess it was last week's show, uh, America has fallen in love with Lucius the Stuttering Pimp, <laughs> as we all have. Lucius is a character in Trapped in the Closet, the multi-chaptered, blacktastic, musical soap opera by uh, legendary woman urinator honor R. Kelly. <laughs> honor. Uh, Lucius is a pimp in the story, well, played by R. Kelly, as are most of the characters. Uh, but he has an unfortunate speech impediment. Lucas, I, Lucius, rather, is a stutterer. For those of you who aren't familiar, I brought in the, the, the clip from last week so you can hear Lucius singing about the fact that he is uh, missing some money and the girls need to work overtime to make up for his losses. And, and you can hear the, the stutter is pretty self-evident. Now, Pimp Lucius is at a loss And somebody gotta pay the cost One of you bitches been coming up sh sh Shout and, and I ain't no dummy Bitch better have my Money, money. Shit. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm saying. Y'all know what I'm saying. Adam thinks that would make for a, uh, an effective creepy clown. Okay. Okay? Let's Here see what go, happens. Here we go, man. Strong on math. Shit. Y'all know what I'm saying. <laughs> Good work. Well out. done, sir. Uh, every week we like to say goodbye to some people in show business who have uh, put in the time. They've entertained us for years, and their passing makes this world a little sadder place. Every week we say goodbye to them in the Tinseltown Steps. And now another edition of. Tinseltown They will be missed. They will indeed. This week's Tinseltown Stiff is a legendary influential guitarist named Mickey Guitar Baker. Mickey Baker was a hard-working session man in the, uh, in the beginnings of rock and roll in the 1950s, worked with Ray Charles and Ruth Brown and the Drifters. He was a really uh, in-demand session guy, and eventually he got together with one of his guitar students, a woman named Sylvia Vanderpool, and they formed a group called Mickey and Sylvia. In 1955, they had one big smash hit called Love is Strange. In 1957 was when that came out. Became a uh, top Billboard song. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, you may remember it from the movie Dirty Dancing. Here's a little taste of Love is Strange. <laughs> See, 
I see Sharon Stone walking through a casino when I hear that. Oh, that's right. Yeah, from Casino. Yeah, it was, yeah. I, I mean, casino, when uh, Marty Scorsese kind of reappropriated the song because it definitely belonged to Dirty Dancing. Yeah. That's the one that does it for me. Now he sl- does slow-mo on, on Sharon Stone and, and Robert De Niro's just watching her. It's such yeah. a cool shot. That's a great song, man. I didn't know that was that guy. And um, it reminds me of uh, Jennifer Grey's original nose. That's what I always yeah. think. Yeah. Uh, I can see her there dancing, trying to keep her nose up, on <laughs> her little head quivering under the weight of it, and just uh, just doing that cha-cha dance. Nobody puts tries. baby in a qu- Oh, she's just beyond her fucking nose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, sir. So uh, Mickey passed away this week, the age of 87 years old. Oh, so. big bucket of wind. Yeah, he will Good be for missed. him. We also like to sh- highlight some showbiz celebrities who are able to get out of the way of their own egos each and every week. It's a segment we call Hollywood Helpers. Ooh-ah, ooh-ah. Oh, margaritas. Ooh-ah, ooh-ah. Hollywood Helpers. Oh, oh, oh. Hollywood Helpers. No, oh, oh, no, oh. stop it. Ooh-ah. Oh, oh, oh. Hollywood Helpers. Come on now. Hollywood, Hollywood Helpers. It's quite a refractory period you have there. <laughs> it's just that music's that beat. Yeah. I'm very pleased to say that this week's Hollywood helper is none other than TV's Batman, Adam West. Yes! My buddy, Adam. Drew West, what happened? This is the kind of guy he is. And I knew a little bit about this story before it happened, but the video reached the internet this week. Uh, There's a guy in the Batman collector's community, and we kind of know each other a little bit, named Mark Hardiman. And I had always heard of Mark. I met him once. I think when Adam got his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, he came down to to see it happen. Mm. But he lives in San Francisco. He's a fireman there, saves lives. Um, He's he's known amongst the Batman collectors like myself for having one of the, I think there's only two that exist, original sets of Batman and Robin costumes from the 60s show. He's got the real deal. Really? Now, I didn't know this about Mark, but apparently he's, been un- he's had some really tough times as of late the past couple of years. He had twin boys, uh, both in uh, when they were toddlers. One passed away from cancer, oh, no. and then 26 days later, uh, the other one was diagnosed with autism, his, oh. twin, his twin sons. So, uh, as you can imagine, it's been a dark time in their household. They, they're, he's, I met him once. He's an amazing guy and a fireman, and he's really been putting on a brave face and just doing what he needs to do to keep his family together. Anyway, Adam West heard about this and apparently decided to take upon himself to go visit Mark and his wife at their home and surprise them. Okay. And they set up a, uh, a deal with a video production company that told Mark that they were going to do a piece on Batman collectors and uh, his costumes and stuff. And then Adam was just going to show up and knock on the door. So here's the video of Adam showing up at their house. It's pretty cool. Here's, here's what's... Gray house? Mark and Sherry have been through some rough times. And I hope that uh, my visit uh, gives them some kind of joy or fun or something to talk to the neighbors about. I'm not sure. So why don't you just take us through each piece? Who's that? We'll play our lunch. Oh. Sorry. I'm looking for my cape and cowl. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Hey. Hi, Mark. Hello, Shelly. How are you? Oh my god. Hey. Oh my god. So, what are you What's doing at my house? Let's go see your collection, Mark. Oh. oh. Yeah, pretty cool. Awesome. What is that from? Uh, Yahoo just put it up on the, their site. You can go to yahoo.com, and they've got a little piece there where they show, uh, I guess it's called Ultimate Surprises or something, where they try to make people's lives a little bit better by surprising them with something, and that was that's their little true, story man. there. So pretty cool, and that's that the kind of guy really he is. No, so that that was nice. made me cry a little bit. <laughs> that was really touching. That's cool. Could yeah. you imagine, man? Like, her reaction is pretty authentic. Yeah, that's and then awesome. Mark, too. I mean, they were both blown away by the fact that they sh- he showed up at their house. You know? Could you imagine if Bruce Wayne really showed up at your house and was like, I want my cape and cowl? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is mine. <laughs> Sadly, I heard Adam uh, pocketed some shit on the way out. Though, <laughs> no, it's true. He ripped him off. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Bastard. Every week, we take a look that, at stuff that just falls through the cracks, whether it's television or film. Uh, hundreds of pairs of eyes look at these projects before they reach the audience, and yet still, somehow, these mistakes get through. Every week, we like to salute them with shit that should not be. And now for shit we should not see Here's some shit that should not be 
This week's email comes from Ross. He says, since we're at the beginning of the holiday season, I don't think there's any shit that should not be better than this little gem from the Rankin Bass Classic, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Oh, it's a classic that yeah, every yeah. year. I've seen this every year I've been alive. So I, I, I've, uh, dozens of times I've seen it. One of the first programs as a child that I was like, there's something for me because I identified with the Bumble. Sure. <laughs> Bumble's bounce. Totally. Yeah. So did Kev. Uh, Hermie the Elf, of course, doesn't want to be a toy maker. Mm -hmm. I want to be a dentist. Excellent. He wants to be a dentist. Yeah, yeah, well done, and there's man. the head elf in this uh, this piece who's the dick. He said, the, this head elf is a dick. He's like, Hermie, what are you talking about? You want to be a dentist? Make those toys. Yeah, yeah. That's how the guy talks, right? Except in this scene. Something happens horrible in this scene where suddenly his voice changes mid-scene and no one can explain it. And I never noticed that until this guy pointed this out and brought this clip to my attention. Okay. They're singing for Santa. They're about to sing We Are Santa's Elves, the classic song. Mm -hmm. And uh, the head elf, who's a dick, if I didn't mention it, <laughs> is like, yeah, we're going to do that for Santa. And then he comes back. He's just, he's just, a, just a big homo. I don't know what's going on. It's just, it's, I can't understand what's happening. Here's the clip from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. All out for elf practice! Well, let's get this over with. I have to go down and look over the new deer. Okay, Santa. Now let's try out the new elf song I wrote. And remember, it's for Santa. And the one and the two and the three -a. What the fuck? What the fuck, Rankin and Bass? You have one job. That's to move little clay things and make people's voice come out of them. And then match the voices up to little clay things. Could you imagine how many kids, when they watch it, would be like, his voice changed, mommy. <laughs> I'm like, don't be ridiculous. Shut up. <laughs> Drink your eggnog with rum in it. That's what my mom always said, and I gladly did. Shut up. This week, we also take a look at A-list actors who give in less than A-list performances with exquisite acting. To be or not to be, that is the question. Welcome to the world of exquisite acting with Ralph Garman and Kevin Smith. Uh. Teresa Russell is this week's exquisite actor. Teresa Russell was a, a big star in the late 70s, early 80s. Black no, Widow, correct? Black Widow with Deborah Winger. She mm -hmm. starred in that. She, she mates, she kills. That's right. She That's was in the, the miniseries book. Blind Ambition. Mm -hmm. She did a bunch of movies with her at the time, husband Nicholas Rogue. She worked with him a bunch. But she was also known as Denise Richards' mom in Wild Things, if you ever saw that film, yes. which famously features the threesome with Nev Campbell, Denise Richards, and Matt Dillon. That's what that movie's probably best known for. Okay. Uh, this comes from Kyle in Oklahoma, who says you need to appreciate Deborah, uh, excuse me, Teresa Russell's performance in this by the tender way she treats her daughter, Denise Richards. In this scene, Denise Richards is visibly upset, and uh, Teresa Russell, as the mother, comes in to ask her why she's crying. Here's this week's exquisite acting. <laughs> what is it? I miss Dad. <laughs> I miss him too. Sometimes I. No, you don't. He didn't have to kill himself, Kelly. <laughs> what an odd reading for that line. <laughs> he didn't have to kill himself, Kelly. You usually have to watch a porn movie to get that level of acting. <laughs> yeah, usually after that line, tops come off. <laughs> That's right. Here, let me make you feel better, Kelly. <laughs> Bing bong, someone ordered Pete, Pete, this. One of my favorite segments of the week is when people take my buddy Kevin Smith and put him in inappropriate places via the magic of Photoshop. It's known as Kev In. What's Kev In today? Something crazy or awesome or gay? By gay we mean homosexual, like maybe some dudes, but what's Kev in? Let's see what's Kev in this week. This week we take a look at the history of Kevin's career, not as a uh, screenwriter and director, as many of you may know him best, but as an actor. A lot of you don't know that Kevin started out as a child actor. Here's Kevin in his very first role, I believe it was, uh, playing the role of Elliot in E.T. I don't know if you guys knew that... Kevin was, <laughs> Kevin as a boy was actually the, the childhood chum of E.T. the Extraterrestrial in the Steven Spielberg classic. I did not know that you had that role. That is a picture I put up this week on Facebook of me at age 14. Yeah. 
You you were young. Yeah, yeah. I've got a little porn stash if you look real closely. You notice that. Yeah, you November. look good in overalls. You should think about that as a look. <laughs> totally. Kevin, of course, his career blew up after that. He went on to work with many directors, including John Landis. Uh, not many people know that he was the best friend to David Naughton in American Werewolf in London. Yeah. <laughs> Here they are on the moors. Stay off the moors. That, that was picture the made the rounds this week, huh? <laughs> sure Young did. Kev. And then uh, Kevin as an actor grew, and of course he worked for many, many years. Most recently, you probably have seen him in Looper with Bruce Willis. <laughs> and have you seen uh, that film? <laughs> Willis <laughs> just looks like he's enjoying choking the shit out of you in that scene. <laughs> I can't imagine why, but uh, those are from Billy Reynolds and Jeremy Z. That's this week's Kevin. Let's take a look at... The HBO headline. Give me head, give me head, give me headlines, and give me head. <laughs> this week's HBO headlines. Well, it's just been a. It's just she's just a gift that keeps on giving. Isn't Crazy, she? dude. I, I mean, normally I don't hear about her until I come here, but even this week it's been so bad. Even I heard about her. In Couldn't advance. avoid it. Yeah. Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> Lindsay Lohan, why don't you come to your senses? Oh, Linz. Oh, Linz. First, there was Liz and Dick. Yeah. And as if that wasn't bad enough. This week, we found out that early Thursday morning at 4 a.m., a allegedly drunken Lindsay Lohan was in a nightclub in Manhattan called the Club Avenue, where reportedly she had followed... A guy named Max George, who's in the band The Wanted, she has a crush on him, so she followed him to that club. That's why she was there. Okay. And reportedly, she had an, a drunken altercation with a woman there, and on the way out of the club, she punched the woman in the face. <laughs> God, he's some sort of parole violation, no? Well, don't get me wrong. The, the penal justice system frowns on punching people in the face when you're on probation, absolutely. And uh, she may have to face the consequences here in Southern California for that. But I thought it was interesting, as the more I found out about this, the woman that she punched was a woman named Tiffany Mitchell, according to sources, who is known as a well-known psychic. How did she not see it coming? See? That was my thought also. Uh, she <laughs> claims that moments before the brawl, a friend of hers... <laughs> moments before the brawl, she's just like, I'm going to get punched, aren't I? <laughs> no! <laughs> just couldn't get out of the way fast enough. <laughs> a friend of hers, Tiffany Mitchell's friend, heard Lindsay Lohan call her a fucking gypsy. <laughs> <laughs> really? Because this woman followed Lindsay into the club, yeah. claiming... This sounds like a fucking daytime soap opera. Claiming that she had something important to tell Lindsay. She had a reading to give her. So she approached Lindsay's table and said, I want to give you a psychic reading. And like any sane person, Lindsay Lohan said, get the fuck away from my table. You this fucking the, gypsy. You fucking gypsy. This isn't the magic castle. Get away from me. <laughs> I'm busy down in Grey Goose and trying to get the guy from the Wanted's cock inside me. I'm not here to have you read my tea leaves. So she told her to get lost, and that's when the altercation happened. The friend heard her say, fucking gypsy, under her breath. So the friend wheels around, calls Lindsay Lohan a whore. How dare she? <laughs> Hope she didn't call her a drunk. And uh, told her that Liz and Dick sucked, she said. No, oh, you don't need a psychic to figure that <laughs> one out. True. <laughs> Everyone knew that. Well, that's when uh, shit went down, and Lindsay on her way out apparently bip this girl in the eye, and then got into her SUV. Bit her in the eye? Bip, bip. Oh. Bip her in like, the eye. Holy shit. It's a little punch. It's a bip. I see it. And then uh, got in her SUV and took off, and the cops had to chase down the SUV and pull her over, and that's where they arrested her. On the run. On, on the, the run, as she's taken okay, off. She tends to leave the scene of the crime quite a bit, a if lot. you've never noticed. And now she's got to go away for something like this, correct? Well, here's the thing. She's claiming she's been set up, that she never hit the girl. Now, the girl, who, first of all, she's got two strikes against her in my book. First, she's a fucking psychic. <laughs> and I don't know if you guys know this or not, but there's no such thing as a fucking psychic. <laughs> Secondly, this woman, Tiffany Mitchell, has hired Gloria Allred to be her attorney. Ah. Now, if Lindsay didn't punch her, she should get a chance to after this, in my opinion. <laughs> and Lindsay says the whole thing's a setup, that she thought they were trying to steal her purse, as gypsies will do. <laughs> 
I've seen enough movies to know. <laughs> and the whole thing was that there's was, was a shakedown. They're trying to cash in a, a civil lawsuit to try to get some money out of Lindsay, but she claims that she never punched her, and she will be vindicated, she claims, because she's hiring a private investigator to find out what's going on with this gypsy ring of thieves. And fuck with them, dude. All they have to say is thinner, and that's it. <laughs> that's true, yeah. But to be honest, I've been insulting gypsies for years, hoping, hoping one of them would say thinner, and it doesn't fucking it never work. never happens? I met one that was, like, even fatter. <laughs> then I got kicked off a fucking Chips plane. Ahoy! <laughs> oh, what a great curse that would be. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, Lindsay was booked around 4 a.m. Thursday morning. She was released about four hours later. We got a picture of her. I was looking for the mugshot. We couldn't find it, but we got a picture of her coming out of the police station, at least. Here is Lindsay. <laughs> Not the first time she was sandwiched between two black guys, by the way. I'll have you know. <laughs> oh, oh, now you got sympathy for her. Now you feel bad. Everybody's moaning. That was one of those bip bip in the eye you're talking about. <laughs> That's <now>. right. <laughs> Share tight. <laughs> so we're going to have to wait and see how this shakes out. But uh, just being arrested alone could violate her probation. Come on, man. Not to Anybody mention she else? smashed that 18-wheeler while she was driving the car. She lied to the cops. I mean, she is a non-stop fuck-up. Or content generator. That's true. We have to send her her residual check when this is all over, <laughs> exactly. too, by the way. Uh, more crime news. And whatever with Lindsay Lohan. What hurts me is when there's someone's who, work who I actually enjoy and respect, unlike Lindsay's. Uh, this Liz and Dick show was awful. But there was a, another woman who got into legal trouble this week who has given me hours and hours of real genuine pleasure and entertainment. Porn star Brianna Banks was in the news this week. <laughs> She was busted for DUI at a McDonald's drive-thru. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's a thing? They got a cop there now? <laughs> You're supposed to be drunk at he the was McDonald's undercover. drive-thru. He was undercover as Mayor McCheese. <laughs> <laughs> oh my him. goodness, you're not driving well. <laughs> by the way, <laughs> fuck Alan Tudyk too, by the way. See that Wreck-It Ralph? Have you seen that Wreck-It Ralph? No. He plays a character called King Candy in that thing. You know how King Candy talks? Oh my goodness, I'm King Candy! Oh. Yeah. What a shame. I got a phone. Fucking Disney, I got a phone. <laughs> you saved a lot of money hiring me for that gig. true, man. You're cheaper than Tudyk. That's right. Anyway, she was busted in a McDonald's drive-thru for drunken driving. Hello, can I take your order? <laughs> I'm the smallest little pig nugget. You talk worse than I do. <laughs> uh, apparently, she had an accident just before she pulled over to get some grub at McDonald's. Okay. And the woman who was in the accident with her said, I think that woman was fucked up. So she called the cops and said, this woman was under the influence, I believe, this little fender bender she had. And so the cops show up at the, at the McDonald's where she's spotted, and they pull her over in the drive-thru. And it turns out, they, according to the sobriety test, like that proves anything, <laughs> she was under the influence. So we've got her, her mug shot and her... We got her, her at work and then her and her mug shot. The mug shots are always disappointing, aren't they? <laughs> Unless they're Nick Nolte's mug shots. Then they're always better than the real thing. But yeah, sadly, uh, Brianna, she's, she loses a little luster when she's down there in the, in the police precinct. For she's those like of you the, who don't know Brianna's work, you may remember her from such films as Party Mouth, which I think is, <laughs> it was a good one. That was my nickname in high school, Party <laughs> Mouth. Was it wasn't really. Uh, Blowjob Adventures of Dr. Fellatio. <laughs> That's the name of my biography. <laughs> Butt Floss Chronicles was another uh, film she was in. My father's lodge <laughs> name. Fire in the Hole. Uh, anally Submerged Semen Slurpers. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking exists, by the way. These are all actual films. Honey, I Blew Everybody. <laughs> TSA, Your Ass is in Our Hands. And her, her, perhaps her most famous work, Creme de la Face. <laughs> yeah. Uh, speaking of bad mug shots, the uh, girl who played Eric's older, sluttier sister on that 70s show, yeah. Lisa Robin Kelly, she was arrested again this week for assaulting her 61-year-old husband. She's 42, he's 61. That's just unfair right there. <laughs> 
The 61-year-old guy should be able to get one of his younger friends to step in for him in the, in the ring of honor and defend himself. But uh, she was arrested for abusing her 61-year-old husband, roughing him, him up. Um, this was the same charge she was arrested for just months ago, by I the way. I remember. I was going to say, but it wasn't the same guy. Time. It was her ex-boyfriend and roommate at the time. So I'm guessing she's living with her ex-boyfriend and her husband at the same time and just beating the shit out of everybody. <laughs> here's, a, uh, here's her mug shot. This, this is her before and after. Here's her in that 70s show. Oh, right now. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do drugs, kids. Don't do drugs. It feels good, but it's not pretty. That's the most important part. More crime news. Elmo has been accused by a third man now this week. Oh, really? Yeah. A third alleged victim of Kevin Clash, the voice of Elmo on Sesame Street, has come forward claiming he was 16 in the year 2000 when Kevin Clash would serve him wine and then engage in sexual activity with him. Mm. Would you like some more Pinot Noir? <laughs> oh, that's fucking dark. <laughs> Elmo like Robert Mondavi. <laughs> then they would engage in various sexual activities. Uh, the accuser's lawyer says that he's been contacted by several other alleged victims, so this may not be the last we hear of this story. Oh, man. Yeah. What happens? Do you think they go keep going with Elmo, or do they pull him out of rotation for a little while? I think they're going to keep Elmo, the character, <laughs> just someone else will be voicing him, that's all. Really? Because Sesame Street has said, look, Elmo didn't do anything wrong. As far as we know, maybe there'll be another person that comes forward and say, Kevin Clash was okay. The puppet, though. <laughs> the puppet made me stick my hand up its ass. <laughs> and then I worked it. It was fun. Use more lube! <laughs> dark. While we're talking about dark, creepy, horrible things, this week it came to light that Anna Nicole Smith's six-year-old daughter is now a model for guest jeans. Her name is Danny Lynn Burkhead. You may remember the big uh, hullabaloo girl, yeah. was going on when uh, she was born just before Anna Nicole Smith passed away. And then who was the father? Was it Howard K. Stern, her lawyer? Was it uh, 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 Larry Burkhead, her then boyfriend? It turned out that he did get custody. And like the father, the good father that he is, he immediately at six years old put her into modeling. Ugh. She's now a model for Kids for Guests, their line. Here's some uh, pictures of... Baby Daniel Lynn, who is posing for photos for guest guest jeans, but she's six years old. She looks older than six. Yeah, well, <laughs> because they have her made up, and she's oh. drunk. <laughs> oh. Uh, Burke had said about putting his daughter into modeling. Daniel Lynn has always looked up to her mom's image. I think this is <laughs> well. Yeah, well, she's the she really is a great role model. Really, when you think about it, I think this is kind of Daniel Lynn's way of paying tribute to her mom in her own special way. Well, it worked out so well for, for Anna Nicole Smith, the whole show business thing. I can see why you'd want to push your kid into it. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, maybe you can find a 97-year-old uh, a man in a wheelchair your, your daughter can marry, too, and then everything will work out just fine. Canadians hate Justin Bieber this week. Once again, America was at the forefront of a trend, and now Canada's just getting around to it. He was performing at the Canadian Football League's championship. It's kind of their Super Bowl up the there in Cup. Canada, the Grey Cup. Yeah, He was performing there, and he was put up on the, the Jumbotron, and everyone in the stadium started to boo him. <laughs> they say it got worse when he started performing at halftime. They started booing them. Oh, he was performing as yeah. well? Yeah, it was, a, it was a mega show they do. It's like a halftime like like show. A halftime yeah. show. Yeah. And he was performing a couple lumbers from his, uh, his record, uh, Back Bacon, I think it's called. I can't remember. Um, <laughs> But they, they started booing him, and apparently he felt very depressed about the whole thing. It's a bummer, man. Yeah. It's his home and native land. It yeah. is his home and native land. And uh, uh, we don't want him, by the way, Canada. In case you're thinking of shipping him out, he's your fucking problem now. While we're talking about fucking problems. This is fascinating. This is awesome. Yes. Maybe my favorite story of the week. Angus T. Jones, who plays the half man on Two and a Half Men. He the made half a man finally lost his fucking mind. <laughs> He made a video this week <sighs> saying that Two and a Half Men, the television program that I believe, if I'm not mistaken, you'll have to check my facts and figures on this, I think he gets $350,000 per episode to film this show. It might be three, it's between 300 and 350, yes. That show that he is on, uh, he says, is filth, and he's urging people not to watch it. 
He has joined a new church. He has found Jesus, and he is now a member of the Forerunner Christian Church, which is affiliated with the Seventh-day Adventist Church. He is this generation's Kirk Cameron. Yes, he is. <laughs> I He's... love it. Every generation gets one, man. <laughs> Willie some Ames child was star, one, Some child then... star finds God. Totally, absolutely. Uh, and apparently part of the Forerunner tradition is you have to make a testimony video for the church. You have to bear your soul. And apparently in... while the, the leader of the church sits right next to you. And stares daggers yeah. in your eyes. Uh, here's a little piece of Angus T. Jones's video talking about how, well, he's not happy with his job anymore. Two and a half men. If you watch Two and a Half Men, please stop watching Two and a Half Men. I'm on Two and a Half Men. I don't want to be on it. Please stop watching it. Please stop filling your head with filth. Please. It's, it's, you know, people say it's just entertainment. The, the fact that it's entertainment, it, it's, do some research on the effects of television and your brain. And I promise you, you'll, you'll have a decision. You'll have a decision to make when it comes to the television, and especially with what you watch on television. Uh, it's bad news. It's bad. It's bad news, people. Don't watch Two and a Half Men. He got lost in his own narrative at one point. Like at the end, the last 15 seconds, if you go back and listen to it, really don't mean anything. Like yeah. he just at one point he's like, "Fuck, I lost the thread," and he just starts throwing in words. You know why? Because he's thinking, "Fuck." They give me a lot of money to be on that yeah. show. And I just said it's filth and don't watch it. I told people not, not to watch the show that I'm on. I got a theory, man. It's a ploy. He's, lo he's like, look, I'm tired of being the half man. I want this show to be three fucking men. Three full men? <laughs> yeah, the only way it's going to happen is if I force their hand by telling them I love Jesus. Jesus is going to be the fucking half man now, man. Well, later on in the video, we don't have time to play it all, but he claims that the enemy, Satan, is trying to send his message through that sitcom. That particular one? Yes. Oh, all bad television. Okay. And I have to agree with him on that point. <laughs> I've seen Two and a Half Men, and that is fucking the work of the devil, that's for sure. <laughs> devil with a soundtrack. That's what I ever, or laugh track, I've always called it. Um, meanwhile, Charlie Sheen has said that the show is cursed. He weighed in? Yeah. He said the show is cursed. Yeah, that's what it is, Charlie. The, the show is cursed. Now, Angus T. Jones should feel bad that Satan left the show, and they hired Ashton Kutcher, so he really shouldn't be upset anymore. <laughs> Angus quickly issued a lengthy apology the following day. What a surprise. <laughs> Meanwhile, during all this, I guarantee, man, fucking Chuck Sheen blows up, fucking the half man blows up, Ducky's sitting on a mailbox in the rain crying, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> this fucking guy just wants to earn his money, go home to his pretty television Put your fucking wife head and... down and make the jokes. <laughs> I like the checks. <laughs> Without qualification, I am grateful to and have the highest regard and respect for all the wonderful people on Two and a Half Men with whom I have worked over and over with the past 10 years who have become an extension of my family, he writes. His lawyer writes. Yeah. I thank them for the opportunity they have given and continue to give me and the help and guidance I have and expect to continue to receive from them. Please don't fire Please me. Don't fire me. Please don't fire me. Please don't fire me. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Uh... Fuck tape star Kim Kardashian in the week, this week's news. Uh, Kim Kardashian, Kim Kardashian, who gives a fuck? This week, the Glendale City Council. Glendale! <laughs> Glendale, for those who are listening who don't know, Glendale, California has a, a large Armenian population. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> And um, Kim Kardashian is of Armenian descent. Okay. And so the city council, at least some of the city council this week, has suggested that they would like to invite her to ride on their upcoming float in the Tournament of Roses parade oh. on New Year's Day. This is it, man, really? All you have to do is fuck somebody on video and they'll put you on a parade float yes. one day? City councilman Ara Najarian... Suggested at a city council meeting that she be invited to have one of the seats on the float because she represents uh, a prominent Armenian American. Some of the other council members, like Dave Weaver, <laughs> <laughs> don't agree. And he suggests they use local high school students on the float instead to truly represent people who live in the city of Glendale. 
I agree. I'm with Dave Weaver on this. A third councilman suggested a compromise, saying they use local high school students who have blown black guys on video. <laughs> oh. oh! That idea was tabled. Apparently no one voted for that one. <laughs> So uh, it's going up for a vote later this week, but Kim Kardashian may be invited to actually ride on the float in the Tournament of Roses parade representing the city of Glendale. Even though she doesn't live there, she has never lived there, she's never been part of that city, they want to put her on the float. I just hope somebody explains to her what ride the float means <laughs> before the day of the parade. They're also suggesting that putting wheels on Khloe Kardashian and having <laughs> Kim ride on top of her would kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> or you could just tether Chloe to those lines like they use at the Thanksgiving Day Parade in Macy's and just pull her down the parade route. <laughs> Amanda Bynes is back in the news. Can you believe this? Yeah. I thought we were... <laughs> I'm just going to get to that. She will pay her fines and drive between the lines. No, you never... The audience is demanding the theme songs now. Where's your theme song? Yeah. Uh, Amanda Bynes, who has told everyone that she wants to be left alone, she's retired from acting, please give her her privacy, posted on Instagram this week that she could not be happier with her turban. I shit you not. She posted a picture of her in a turban saying, and I quote, love my turban. Here's a picture of... Amanda Bynes wearing a turban. Then she was walking down the street in New York City and she uh, happened across a gathering of paparazzi and she quickly panicked because she said, here we go again. Then it turns out they were waiting for Justin Bieber. <laughs> so she uh, hailed a taxi, she hopped in the taxi, then she had the taxi pull over about halfway down the block, she got out of the taxi, walked back to the photographers and started screaming at them, saying how inappropriate they are and what they were doing was illegal and they should leave him alone. Then she hopped back in the taxi and she drove away back to crazy fuck town. <laughs> so she wants to be left alone, but apparently she's still making her presence known in New York City. I see. Uh, you know, it's coming up on uh, our New Year's Eve show. Yes, we New Year's Babylon. New Year's Babylon. Tickets we, are already on sale. Go to csmod.com. We do it every year, and uh, of course, uh, this will be the second year we give away the Chelsea Award, which is the award for the year's um, biggest talentless cunt. Yeah. And last year's winner, Courtney Stodden, is still in the news because she is on I that. She's in the running for this year. As uh, well. she, oh, she might be a repeat winner. Absolutely. You know how hard it is to win back to back. <laughs> It's really difficult. It's like the Stanley Cup. It's hard to do. They haven't done that in a while, man. It's because the pads are too big these days. <laughs> She's a hockey fan in the house. Uh, she's on that show Couples Therapy on VH1. Apparently, one of her co-stars, a guy named Nick Ritchie, claims that Courtney made sexual advances to him while she was in the house alone with him while they were shooting the reality show. Oh, and she's married. She didn't care, he says. She even did it in front of Doug Hutchinson, her husband, Ooh, who seemed creepy. cool with it. He's creepy. Yeah. <laughs> Do, Do it, it Doug. Doug. <laughs> <laughs> it got so bad that I had to have a meeting with the producers to tell her to stop because I didn't want to go to jail. She is only 17 years old. Right, right, right. This guy also claims, he tells the Huffington Post, that the entire relationship is contri contrived. Courtney doesn't care about him, but it's Courtney's mom that is in love with Doug, and they sh that she had her daughter marry him in order to be close to him. And she is now serving as her daughter's manager slash mom, and their relationship between Doug and the mother apparently is very close as well. He also thinks she may be doing drugs and have emotional problems. <laughs> what? <laughs> she seems so centered. This Psy, this fat Korean dude Psy, this Gangnam Style mm. This broke the record, the most watched video ever in the history of YouTube. To be fair, though, you've seen the video. Yeah. It's captivating, man. Like, first time I saw I think I saw it on Equals 3 the first time, and I remember going like, Jesus, who would do this? And who would do it is the person that now has the most amount of hits on YouTube. Can we get a little taste ever. of, uh, a little taste of Psy? Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. 
You're not doing the dance, man. No. Oh, sure. Every other fucking jingle, you're all over the place touching yourself. You won't do the gangnam dance style. I can't do it dance. properly. I can't do it. I don't know how to do it properly. <laughs> he is uh, enjoying his success. Almost, by the way, almost a billion views on YouTube. Yeah. It's approaching man. a billion views. He is a, he's a very likable guy, they say, a guy who was very easygoing, and he must be, because there is a restaurant in Koreatown here in Los Angeles called Soju Town that has recently changed their name. Here's what the, the front of Soju Town looks like now. Gangnam Style Restaurant, it's called. Sai has said that he will not sue Soju Town for changing their name of the restaurant to Gangnam Style. They never bothered to get his permission, but he said that he is flattered because he thinks imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. He also said, in about a year, I'm going to be needing a job as a busboy. No. And he wants to keep in good graces with the owners of Soju Town. That's, a, that's rather sweet of him. He's probably, he's got so much money, he doesn't fucking Do you think you make money off that? Yeah, I do. Totally. That song sold, man. Like, because of that video and shit, isn't it like number one single? Like, a, a different yeah, I don't know if he wrote it or not. I don't know how much money he's making. I just hope he... He's I thought the way I heard that story, that was all his. Like, it was his song, his video. He put it all together, He huh? put all that shit together, man. That's and sweet. again, it's like, if you watch the video, it's... It, it's it's a it's a good use of your time. Like it's visual. Well, let's not get it. nuts. No, you're it's hardly your mind. a good when use of our time. When that little fucking kid comes in, he's like, <laughs> yeah, I know. It just that shit. That's amazing, dude. No, I was like, how come we never saw this before? It just concerns me. No, I'm it, into it this. makes it makes there's too much worry going on for me in that video when I watch it. What about those models who are inhaling all that fake snow and the one girl's choking on it? It makes me very upset. With all due respect to Ben Affleck, this is the film of the year. Right, so, yeah. <laughs> Fuck Argo. <laughs> Argo, fuck yourself. If only John Goodman was in that. Oh, wait a minute. He's in every He's fucking in that, movie. Yeah. Speaking of movies, it's time for a sequence we like to talk about where we can see into the future. We're like those psychics that Lindsay Lohan punches. <laughs> we can tell you movies that aren't even out yet that I promise you will suck. Brock and Schumacher, Michael Bay. They make movies that make you say, Oh my God, that's bullshit. What the fuck? Their movies that will suck. This week's movie that I guarantee you will suck is starring Kellen Lutz of the legendary Twilight series. He's already made a bunch of movies that suck, and now his next movie that will suck is a film called Tatua. Just announced Kellen Lutz will be starring in Tatua. He plays a guy with a rare blood type that allows a special ink to be tattooed onto his body. But when he wants to use the items that are tattooed on his body, he can pull them off and they become real. That's fucking from the comics. They stole that. That's the, the tattooed, tattooed man. man. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, from Shade, right? Yeah. Shade the Changing Man? Yeah. Also from Green Lantern, also yeah, from well. Yeah. So wait, that's the... That's the premise of the film. He will pull tattoos off his body and use them as weapons. I mean, it was a good idea in the comics, but they stole it. This is a stolen idea. Uh, yeah, but more importantly, it's going to suck. <laughs> Isn't he supposed to also play Tarzan? That was I, one of the last reports. We I think he is going also to, to play Tarzan, yeah. But more importantly, he's making a movie where tattoos come to life. Yeah. And not the good tattoo, not the one from Fantasy Island either. No, the ones that are on his body. <laughs> the play, boss! Look, I'm coming to life! That would be cool if he could pull Hervé Villachez off his body. Anytime he's got to defend himself, he just hits somebody with Hervé Villachez. That's right. <laughs> Fuck you, I'll kill you! <laughs> The weapon, Bob, the weapon. <laughs> and while we're talking about movies that will suck, how about TV shows that will suck? Let's not forget about that. Okay. Uh, just announced this week, the Blues Brothers TV show is becoming a reality. No. Dan Aykroyd will star as Elwood Blues. No word on who will be traveling alongside of him. Uh, so this is going to happen? This is going to happen. John Goodman, I guess. Who was in he Blues played, Brothers he 2000? Mighty Mac in Blues Brothers 2000. Yeah, a Canadian-based production company has picked up the rights to the Blues Brothers TV show. It's likely to be produced in Canada, then tried to be sold in America. So if we're lucky, the Border Patrol will hold this in Canada, and it'll never see the light of day in America. Unlike Bieber, who they let slip through the track cracks, like there was a tunnel or something Bieber got through. So wait, it's not he's playing Elwood. But he's playing Elwood. Apparently, Elwood and Jake or whoever 
are uh, newly released from prison at the beginning of the series, and Elwood's trying to find his father since he grew up in an orphanage. And it, it'll be the quest of Elwood trying to find his father. And every week there will be a brand new musical number featuring Elwood and the uh, new Blues Brothers band. I just hope Kellen Lutz is in it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, look, it's, it's uh, Dan Aykroyd's creation, man. Let him have fun with it and whatnot, but... Yeah, no, he can. It's his. He gets to play with it. Let him, let him have fun. Maybe You're much knows. too forgiving, sir. I, I, I mean, it's his. It's his to do with his. He created the Blues Brothers. And yeah. You know, if he wants to go deeper into it, I guess. We'll see. Maybe it'll be all right. Uh, I'm trying. Uh, um, no, 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 no. I'm happy to watch this, though. Uh, Dan it Eckworth. would seem like a no-brainer to do as an animated series. You know what I'm saying? Then you don't have to worry about the... How old yeah. Elwood looks and stuff. Or the everything. missing, you know, John Belushi of it all. Yeah. Uh, Ackroyd said in order to kick off the series before they get started, he's going to go to John Belushi's grave and shit on it. <laughs> just to give it the appropriate <laughs> spirit of the project, just to get things going. Going to just take a dump on Belushi's grave. Oh, that's fucking... I think it's appropriate. <laughs> Kevin and I are both geeks. That means every week we look forward to talking about geek news. Rough and Kevin, rough and Kevin, rough and Kevin. A lot of rumors flying around this week about who's going to be Batman in the new Justice League movie. You may have heard Joseph Gordon-Levitt's name bandied about. I heard, I heard that... Uh, well, here's the thing. A lot of people were excited by the news, and a lot of people were disappointed by the news. It's kind of split. Uh, there are some cats who love The Dark Knight Rises who were like, oh my God, that means that the last scene in Dark Knight Rises is a teaser for Justice League movie because that's technically Batman. And then there are a bunch of people who were like, that's not Bruce Wayne, so it could never be Batman. Right. So people who were excited and then the people who were upset, uh, then the, the excited people got upset and the, ups, the upset people got excited because <laughs> Joseph Gordon-Levitt's representative said, no, that's not the case. It's never going to happen. Oh, it's really? Not gonna be the case. Yeah, debunked they, and they've shit. They've debunked all of those rumors. So everything you read on the internet is, once again, lies. <laughs> Don't believe any of it. Except for this, because I read this on the internet. They're going to do the next X-Men movie that's called X-Men Days of Future Past. Yeah. Brian, Brian Singer is returning to be you the director that, of the Days film. Days of Future Past is the amazing storyline where there's the alternate reality and shit, where and the mutants have all been hunted down by the Sentinels and shit. Kitty Pride and old Wolverine team up. It's, it's a fantastic... If they stick close to the original source material, it's one of the greatest X-Men stories ever told. I thought they were going to do the old uh, Moody Blues album, Days of Future Past. I thought that's what they were going to do. Nights <laughs> in White Satin? You're an old that? man, no. dude. No, yeah. no. Uh, so it turns out they're going to have Brian Magneto. Singer being back is great. That too. is good news. Very cool. Uh, Magneto and Professor Xavier will be played by both Michael Fassbender and James McAvoy. Oh, that's awesome, man. That means they're doing up uh, the present and past version. But also Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart are also returning as Magneto. Oh, that's awesome as and well. And Professor Xavier. So you're going to get both versions. James McAvoy. Going on at the same time. That is tremendous, man. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence will return as Mystique. Really? Yeah. Wow, she's on to other shit. Good for her. No, she wants to do it. Loyalty. I'd rather see Rebecca Romaine Stamos, but what do I know? She's not Stamos anymore, is she? She's Rebecca Romaine. And who's and wh who's Nicholas Holt? And uh, Nicholas Holt played Beast, of course. Oh, he was in the first guy. Class, yeah, yeah, yeah. In first yeah. class. He's I the, liked first class. He's it's returning really as well. well done it flick. is really well done. Uh, Matthew Vaughn was the director of uh, of X Men First Hell Class. Hell of a segue. And <laughs> the reason I bring his name up is because there's been a lot of speculation about who's going to direct the Star Wars movies, who's going to who's going to helm the next trilogy of Star Wars movies. My my friend Kevin Smith's name has even been bandied about in some circles. Unless unless Star Wars Seven takes place on the ice, no. What about a hockey tournament between the Rebellion and awesome. the Empire? That, honestly, that would make sense to me because Star Wars 7 follows Star Wars 6, Return of the Jedi, where the Rebels beat the Empire, right. and it's done. So there's yes. nothing to do for the next three movies except play hockey. That's true. Well, one of the names that has been bandied about is uh, Matthew Vaughn, as we mentioned, was the director of X-Men First Class. He and did a great job on that. He also, I like Kick-Ass, too. He did a nice job on Kick-Ass. No, I loved Kick-Ass. Yeah, and yeah. apparently he's helming Kick-Ass, too, right, isn't he? Or at least he's involved. He's producing it or something. I don't know if he directed it or not. Anyway, his buddy Jason Fleming, who was in Snatch and also in First Class, uh, they've done nine films together. Mm -hmm. And so he was cornered at one of these, um, I don't know, roundtables or something, being interviewed by somebody. And someone brings up Star Wars because... 
Matthew Vaughn's name had been just tangentially attached as one of the potential directors for Star Wars 7, the next film. And Jason Fleming fucks up big time in this interview. <laughs> he kind of gives away the story. Here's a little piece of video with a guy talking about <laughs> Star Wars. And Jason Fleming, I think, knows more than, than we do. And have you, uh, have you chatted to Matthew at all about uh, any Star Wars potential? Because that could be that could be free films <laughs> for you. <laughs> no, I mean, me and Matt have done uh, nine films together. So um, I'm sure I get the call for Star Wars, but I'm sure it's going to be literally... Fleming, no. I know on paper it doesn't look that much, but I promise you it's essential to the part. So we'll see what happens. Is Matthew interested, though, do you think? In what? Souls? Souls, I think yeah. that's. Who is he? Come on. Uh, yeah, he's interested, yeah. Bar the deal. <laughs> he gave it away. Is that it looks sure? like, yeah, Matthew Vaughn's going to be the director of Seven. Right on. According to his best friend who said it's, it's already in the works. Right on. Unless it isn't. I, li I mean, first, uh, first Class is a really good flick. He did a really nice job with that kick ass as well. It's amazing how many people are almost falling over themselves trying to direct one of these Star Wars films. You have a whole I, generation I of filmmakers who are... It's more really? film yeah, a lot of people ducking it and shit. They asked a lot of people. And Ben passed. Chris Nolan passed. I think they asked Favreau. He passed. A lot of people passed. Really? I think there's a, it's big shoes to fill for some cats. Other cats obli obviously up to the challenge. I think there's a generation of filmmakers who would love a shot at the Star Wars franchise. Yeah. Love to take a look. And uh, the best geek news of the week, in my opinion, is the fact that the original 1966 Batmobile is going up for auction. Nice. <laughs> January 19th. Car? January 19th in Scottsdale, Arizona. The one, the original, the first, the number one car. This is the hero car used on the series. This is George Barris's car that he created, the Batmobile. This is it. This is the only one. His own? This is his? This is the first one. This is the one that was used in all the hero shots in the TV series and the feature film in 66. This is, this is the one. This has never been sold before. He's had it in his possession since the show went off the air in 1968. It's and he been takes his. it on tour and shit and like And he does. That. He's made a ton of mo money with it. But I think he's getting old now. He realizes that he might as well cash in while he can still, uh, still appreciate the money that's going to bring in. Totally. And there's a ton of replicas out there. There are, there are, there are douchebags who will get married... And they will show up in a replica 1966 Batmobile. And they look good. Here's a picture of one of those douchebags right there. They will, they will get the replica going. And then they're very impressive. Shut up. <laughs> but there's only one. There's only one uh, original. Here's the, uh, this is George Barris outside I'm sorry, of the wait, shop go back. There. Can we go back to the other picture? You want to go back to She wore white? Yeah, she's wearing white. Bold. You got some balls. Uh, how much? How much is the car going for? Well, here's the question. How much is the car going for? Yeah. There is a reserve price. Okay. But they won't reveal what it is. $285,000. Are you fucking insane? Probably higher. Um, hmm, uh, they asked the guy, Barrett Jackson's uh, chief executive officer, Craig Jackson. He said, let's just say... It's in the multi-millions, he says. Opening bid? Yes. That's the reserve on I it. guess so, right? Like this is... The Aston Martin that Sean Connery drove in Goldfinger yeah. went for $1.5 million at and, auction. And that's not even nearly as well-known as the This Batman has got to be the most famous automotive car in television. In terms of vehicles, in, in well-known vehicles in pop culture history. This is it, it's, right? It would probably I mean, you were there at the Comic-Con this summer. Then Enterprise under that? Maybe? Yeah, right. You were at Comic-Con this summer. And I they was. had all of them out there under the tent. This thing still, some 45, 50 years later, still gets a ton of attention it's from the people. It's the gold standard, yeah. man. It's, uh, and if you watch the cartoon Batman Brave and Bold, all of the Batman vehicles took their, their kind of highlights from the highlights of that, of that Batmobile. It'll always be the Batmobile to, to everybody. Yeah. I could see that going for So the, to have the original, five, the five, one that was made? Bucks. Yeah, I'm thinking. That. I think so. So for those of you who asked me what I want for Christmas, <laughs> look, we reach hundreds of thousands of people with this podcast. Yes. We have to have one fucking rich guy in the audience. There has to be one guy who's stinking fucking rich. Totally. Who's who wouldn't miss a few mil. Who wants to give you your childhood back. Yes. How about something for the guy who if does the voices? If you want to see this Ralph's heart grow two sizes too big, 
Buy him a car. Right. And I know last week I asked for that Emma Stone sex tape. But this week, <laughs> this week I'm serious. This week I'd really like someone to buy me the Batmobile because I don't have that kind of coin. I mean, I'm not a big, you know, Hollywood mogul, movie star, yeah, movie yeah, director. Right. I didn't start my own universe. I don't have all of the 20 years of filmmaking behind me with all of the... Legendary films that people love. I don't. I don't play to sold out Sydney opera houses around the world doing my Q and A's. I don't have that kind of money, people. I'm just a lowly, hardworking radio DJ. That's all I am. So if someone were to want to buy me something special to prove, I don't know, friendship or appreciation for years of of partnership, doing podcasts or things. And I'm saying there's an, op there's an opportunity here for someone to, to make it. I agree. Lovitz should buy you that car. <laughs> and lastly, the mayor of Batman, Turkey is upset. Did you know there's a city in Turkey called Batman? Fuck yes. I'm going to live there when I grow older. Because <laughs> I've always wanted to be inside Batman. <laughs> it's in southeastern Turkey. And uh, the mayor of Batman has just announced they are suing Warner Brothers and Christopher Nolan. A multi-million dollar lawsuit. Because they say they were Batman first before Batman. <laughs> oh, that's genius. Really? <laughs> yeah, were they, they technically Batman first? I have no idea. Because you know why? It's fucking Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Let's sue them, man. Because, you know, Turkey was Turkey first. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> the bird. <laughs> predates you. Yeah. We can go all day, turkey. <laughs> Jive turkey. <laughs> um, Husseinian Kalkan, <laughs> the pro kurdish Democratic Society Party mayor of Batman has filed a lawsuit against Warner Brothers and the producers of The Dark Knight because he says, and I quote, there is only one Batman in the world. <laughs> I, I guess he means his city. I'm guessing. Because I was going to agree with him in principle. The American producers used the name of our city without informing us, he said. Now, no one bothered to mention him, I guess, that Batman has been around since 19-fucking-39. <laughs> yeah. If you wanted to file a lawsuit, maybe you want to do it at some time in the past, I don't know, 100 years or so. Are you sure that they're not filing the lawsuit because they're like, we have seen this Dark Knight Rises and we do not like the Batman voice? <laughs> what is this with Batman taking eight years off? <laughs> We are suing you for, for breach of Batmanhood. Also, he walks with limp and then puts on leg brace and can kick bricks. <laughs> this movie is shit. <laughs> um, no word on whether they recognize that Batman's been around since 1939, but it may, some people say, have something to do with the fact that The Dark Knight just passed the $1 billion mark at the box office, and perhaps Batman Turkey wants a little something, something. They want to wet their wings with something. You they know want some of the white meat. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Warner Brothers says they're looking into the case, but they have not presented their, their defense yet. Here's the thing. Um, part of the suit, according to the mayor of Batman Turkey, is that they <laughs> believe that Batman, the character, has caused an unusually high number of unsolved murders in their town. And a high female suicide rate. Because of Batman? Because everyone's so bummed out that there's this character running around that has the name of their city. That they're killing themselves? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Batman would hate that. He would. And I'm guessing the women in that town are uh, uh, upset because they live in fucking Turkey. <laughs> so we'll wait and see what happens. But I'm guessing uh, Warner Brothers will fight this suit with enormous amount of strength. Yeah, 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 with their utility belt. As yes, they will, yeah. <laughs> Every week we take a look at a musical question that answers something Kevin Smith is trying desperately to figure out. How big is Liam Neeson's cock? Oh, we can't help but wonder How big is Liam Neeson's cock? Liam Neeson's cock is so big it auditioned for Cop Out, but sadly, that project already had a huge dick in it. <laughs> That's funny. 
<laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. It's the reason Batman had to take eight years off. <laughs> and why he walked with a limp. <laughs> <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? When he masturbates, it's considered a threesome. <laughs> Just a lot. There's a lot of flesh there. Liam Neeson's cock is so big. Clarissa can't explain it all. <laughs> oh, that's, that's good. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? Don't make him horny. You wouldn't like him when he's horny. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? When Liam pokes you on Facebook, you walk funny for a week. <laughs> that's a good one today. Good man. batch. Yeah, yeah, really. Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? The punchline to this joke will be on next week's show. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? An old lady was once seen standing on its tip throwing a diamond necklace into the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> My heart on will go on. <laughs> Near far. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big, How big is it? that Lifetime made a TV movie called Liam and Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big, How big is it? that it actually got back together with Taylor Swift. <laughs> and she said it would never happen. Ever, ever, ever. Yeah. <laughs> and lastly, Liam it What? <laughs> wow, I almost sobered up. Let me pull up in your battery compartment. <laughs> Go. It's small wonder all of a sudden. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? It's why Lucius the Pimp <laughs> Shit, y'all know what I'm saying. <laughs> Hollywood, did you have a good time this evening? Thank you, as always, for coming out to see us. We truly do appreciate it. We off next week? No, we're here. Uh, we're off next week. Yeah, we're, we're off, off next, next week, week, but we're back two weeks after back that. Back on the 15th, then the 22nd. Yes, and don't forget, New Year's Bad Believe is on sale now, and the yeah. tickets are scarce, so make sure you grab them up. We can't thank you enough uh, for selling us out again, man. Thanks for being here this evening, but that is it for Hollywood Babylon this week. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Ralph Garman. Babble the fuck off, everybody. Good night. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up.